start a radio. All right, we are ready. Welcome back. And today I have with me the little Valkyra Y100 hexacopter. This is a different bird. It is a Wi-Fi enabled, you can see here it's advertising with the App Store, it's iOS and Android enabled. And it's essentially an easy to fly little iOS quad or hexacopter. Now I gotta say, I am the wrong demographics for this product because I like to fly with a radio and my opinions about this is mostly based on a guy flying with a radio as compared to if I was flying this with an iPhone. But I'm gonna try to make comments on both. So let's take a look at it and I'm gonna tell you how this works. Let's see if I can get into this box. Valkyria is really starting to make some much nicer boxes than they did a couple of years ago. They are becoming a different company and that's really interesting to follow what they're doing here. So let's see what we get out of here. Here is the hexacopter. Oh, and here is an instruction manual. So let's get rid of the box, put it back here. It's not going any further. And here, let's take a quick look at the quick, look, quick start guy comes in a big plastic bag. Interestingly, for once, there is no CDs in this kit. So here is the quick start guide, and here it is, kind of going through all the details. Um, I think I understand the gist of this. So let's just go straight to the action here. In here, when we crack this open, I'm done with that, that goes over here, and here is the main character for this. Let's get the rest out before we proceed. So I'm just gonna put that right here for now. And down in the base, it's their new way of stacking stuff, three levels. Here is the landing gear. Definitely somebody has been channeling uh, Star Wars or Star Trek here. Here's the charger. It's one of those usual chargers, it's a balance charger that plugs into you, the USB port on your laptop. It's probably almost underdimensionated for this size of a battery. And here is also a little screwdriver to make adjustments. And finally there is an adapter from the balanced tap batteries to a JST battery. That's because this one is big enough that it's using a JST plug instead of balance there. So let's see, and I already pre-charged the battery, so I'm gonna grab the pre-charged one. And we're gonna take a look at this. Here is up front is the camera. This one transmits video by Wi-Fi. And I'm gonna come back to that. I'm not so keen on the Wi-Fi thing, but I am keen on the props. Look at this thing, huge props. This thing has an enormous amount of airfoil area and it should be, and it's already 140 grams with the battery. The, Landing gear, by the way, is about 10 grams, so I can easily imagine removing that and sticking a camera on the bottom. So in here, up front is the camera. Down here on the side, you can probably see the little black antenna they let protrude out. You always wanna make sure that sticks straight down because that's how it gets information. Back here is what at first I hoped was gonna be the 5.8 video antenna, but of course it's not. It's a 2.4 Wi-Fi antenna because this is a Wi-Fi gizmo. And I already tried flying one of these with the iPhone. It's easy, you hit the auto start, it goes up about three feet and it just hangs there. And then you just move the slide on the phone a little bit and this moves with it. So it's really easy and you get the picture but there's too much delay in that picture that you, so that you can actually use this as an FPV camera, which is very unfortunate because I had hoped, of course, that I would be able to get this video onto the screen right here because as you know, the F4 and the F7 radios has a built-in 5.8 screen and I was thinking, oh, that would be so cool, I can get this video straight into that radio. But that's no dice, so that's not gonna happen. Now when we put a battery in it, we go to the back end of this thing. Right here, down here is the thing, and up on the edge here is a little release. 
that's kind of fiddly to my opinion and then you pull that down to see the cabiner's interior and oh before I do that we should put some gear on it landing gear the landing gear goes underneath here there's basically two support bars and two holes you just pop it on and here's your landing gear I personally can probably live without the landing gear I'm gonna trade some of that weight for a camera and but let's start here we're gonna stick the battery in and we're gonna push it all the way back and if you use the iOS app once after you turn it on you have to do the calibration the same thing here so I'm gonna turn it on put it right here for a minute and then I'm gonna turn the radio on I wanted to see this picture come on the screen here but unfortunately it won't because this is a 2.4 Wi-Fi video transmission so I can close the screen for the 5.8 and now we have it here it has turned red up here I don't know if you can see this little red glow there so now it is bound and it should be ready the next thing we have to do is take the sticks and take both sticks down and out that's gonna turn on the calibration so I'm gonna try that I'm gonna push this down and out and it started blinking and once it starts blinking you can see it blinking now once it starts blinking we're gonna turn this 360 degrees and since I'm moving this up so you can see it this may or may not work next we're gonna tilt it nose down and then we're gonna turn it 360 degrees again and as usual I'm not particularly concerned if it works here but it did but we all I'm only demonstrating this if it doesn't go to the solid red right away at home then just do it again I'm gonna grab a radio here and I'm gonna hold this up here just so you can get a feeling of how this is so different notice that instant kick in what it actually does is even though the throttle is almost in the bottom as soon as you come up just a little bit it's gonna kick in and kind of go to flying power it's so quiet by the way so here I'm gonna pull this up and now it's essentially a flying power or all mode now I move the stick two-thirds of the way but it have not changed the sound until I move it past half halfway there let me kill that so you can hear something well I can now move the stick almost all the way up to halfway and it's gonna go at the same almost flying speed once it gets to halfway it's essential at takeoff power but it's not till I move past halfway that the chip in here the auto altitude hold decides okay he's above 50% he wants to climb so it starts so it just basically takes off nice and gently and it goes up keep the throttle mm -hmm. stick at I'm gonna turn that off keep the throttle stick at halfway and it will basically just kind of hang there as you fly you have to get used to that because to get it to climb you gotta manhandle the throttle stick and you gotta mash it like this is flying height now to get it to climb you gotta mash it like way up then it goes oh okay we want to climb and it starts climbing a little bit same thing you now back to middle it's gonna stay level or hoover about the same altitude now to get it down you're literally pulling this thing all the way to the bottom and it starts coming down and then to stop it boom, give it a good throttle up and then zero it now to land it you basically land it down and as you hit the ground it's gonna stay at the flying speed even though your throttle is all the way in the bottom and it's gonna stay about four or five seconds on the ground till it decides it's have landed and then it's gonna shut the motors down so that's where this is really an acquired taste it's it's a whole different flying experience because you do not have the immediate stick reaction when you fly these motors they're gonna come on and off as the altitude hold device decides a good time to do it now that's how it flies and it flies about the same thing with the iPhone 
I'm not a big fan of the iPhone simply because this radio reaches much further and I feel it's much safer to fly with a real radio than a Wi-Fi device. However, if you want to fly in the, a large house, want to fly out in a park, open park, but you're not going on the boundaries of the park, a Wi-Fi a Wi-Fi solution like the iPhone is going to be wonderful. So that's what's here. Now what I am planning to do is I'm going to try to stick a small camera on top and see to get some flying video and see what it can do. Then I'm going to see if it can maybe carry the Mobius camera. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to try to stick on top some double-sided tape. Be very easy. Actually, I wouldn't be surprised. It will fit really nicely right down here between these V legs. So I think a rubber band is gonna hold that really nice down here. So that's my immediate plan, what I wanna do with it. Then other thing I wanna do, because I was underwhelmed with the fact I don't get video out of this. So I'm thinking I'm gonna take one of these that I have in stock, 5801, TX5801, and I'm probably just gonna stick it right on the bottom down here because that will give me 5.8 video so I can use my fat chart goggles and I can use the screen on the radio. And the little plug here, up here, goes into one of the spare plugs on the control board to get the usual 3.5 voltage that run this particular video transmitter. So that will give me about 100 yards of live video that I can in fact FPV with. So that should make this thing FPV a ball. And together with a little 808 number 16 with the D lens, I have both live video and I have record 720p recording. So that's what I'm gonna do with this. Mostly because I'm not an iPhone flying affectionario. However, there's no good reason you can't fly this with an iPhone. Now, if you want to take a look here, you can see there's a joint. This is the main arm, and out here there's a joint. So when you damage a motor setup, it's very easy to just push these two in, and you can pop, oh, I can't get it now, I need a little longer fingernails, but you can basically pop each motor directly off here. It's very well built, and from what I read on the internet, it's surprisingly strong. So that is, that is the Y100 from Valkyra. And it's blinking because I've turned the radio off. The one thing I'm gonna have a hard time with, I don't think I'll be able to squeeze the extra cable in. So being me, I'll probably just pop the tailgate here off, a little less weight, let the antenna hang down on its own accord. I'm sure it will do that just fine. And I'll just stick the battery in because the battery is very firm in here. And especially as you start using it and the battery gets a little bigger, it's going to be quite snug in this thing. It's not going to come out by any means. So I'm not worried about that. So that's it. I'm going to put a TX5801 in it. I'm going to put a camera in it and I'm going to go have fun. Now, if how do I feel about it and would I recommend this? It is a great, this one here, I paid $125 for it at ValkyraHelicopterSupply.com. I think it's a good price. You get a fairly well flying little device. I wish it was more responsive in the up down, but for a beginner that's not used to an aggressive hexa or quad, this is gonna be a very easy thing to fly. It's gonna be very forgiving. And because it was made to fly with an iPhone, if you use this to learn to fly before you get into something bigger with a real radio, you're gonna find that it's very forgiving. It, it doesn't want to run away. It wanna stay still basically. And that's exactly what you wanted to do for a beginner. So this is a very good little solid thing. At $125, I can afford to throw my own video on it and play a little bit with it as a indoor FPV aircraft. You are gonna be surprised with the up and down, and if you start coming down towards something, you are gonna be surprised by how much you have to muscle the sticks in order to get this to pick up height again. You really have to like move the stick like this, and if you do that with a regular quad, the thing is gonna go like a bat out of hell, to put it bluntly. 
and if you pull the stick down as much as you have here the thing is going to come down like a brick so whatever you do don't take those habits with you to your next quad anyway i do recommend it for 125 dollars if you already have an iphone or if you already have a valkyra radio if you need or uh, get in the valkyra radio for say an x350 this is a great little practice thing for to get used to flying and it's inexpensive compared to crashing a 500 or a thousand dollar aircraft so at 125 dollars i think it's a good deal Well, it didn't seem right to wrap this up without a quick test flight. And I am sticking a battery into this. And here you can see I mounted a little, what is that called, a key cam 808 on the bottom of this. And just a piece of rubber band come around these two. I hooked it up here. I don't know if you can see it. Crossed it in the middle so it doesn't let go. And I hooked it on here so the 808 is in. That is. Actually, like I said before, this thing doesn't carry a lot of load and it is just borderline because the weight of this thing makes a big difference for how it flies. So what I'm going to do is going to go ahead and fly this and just forgive me for a second while I fire this up. So, so now this is on and you can see the light has stopped blinking <laughs> and it should be ready to fly. So, slowly, I have full 100% throttle right now. So that's how fast it climbs at 100% throttle. This is not likely to get away from you. And let's get this back so we can take a look at it. There we go. Oh. <laughs> okay, and here it is flying. One thing I notice right now is I'm flying with full right, I'm flying with full right stick and it is just not responding. That's probably because I turned it on at an angle and there it goes again. I'm just going to let this go for a second and we'll get a little video from that camera to stick over what we have here. So you can see it is fairly stable, it flies quite well. It's an incredibly easy little aircraft to fly. I can't start to tell you how easy this is. So here it is. And coming back to me. Oh, almost lost it. Here it is. This is the aircraft. It's still recording. And I already have a Devo rec um, radio. So that was easy. However, this is probably the easiest beginner multi-rotor I have ever flown. The IMU in this is so stable, it just wants to stay in one place. You need no real experience to fly this thing. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna raffle this off because I usually fly something that's bigger and I don't want this sitting on the shelf. So go ahead and sign up, subscribe to my YouTube channel that is just click right here on the screen and then send an email to fpvguycontest at gmail.com. That's it. And any email received with a valid YouTube username that is subscribed to my channel before July 15th is entered automatically into the raffle for this thing, plus two batteries and shipment in the US. All right, thank you for watching this and stay tuned for more videos.